Hey Clashers and welcome back to another video and today we want to take a look at another legend base Well, you want to have your defensive lock looking like uh, this right here Well, then you should definitely take a look at that base and maybe take some inspirations to build your own base Or just try it out on your own Either way, we should get right into it I will explain the base just a little bit and then we're going to take a look at a couple of replays on this base, how it did do versus a couple of meta strategies and so on. But the first thing, let's talk about the base. So this base first off is, well, half of the base is like the last base. Because I really like this tunnel compartment, it looked pretty strong. Um, and I thought, okay, let's just use that as like new idea. Or like as, as a, not a new idea, but let's use that again and let's use the entire right side for something else, for something creative and something new. And this was what I was coming up with. I really like this double inferno tower setup, which is set to single, which right now is a huge thing in Legends. Like in Legends, we have so many different strategies, which are really not that nice against single inferno towers, to be honest. And the main reason why, for example, competitive players are not using more single inferno towers are pretty simple. Lalo and at the same time you can adjust your army composition which means for example drag bad and other bad based strategies are pretty strong against those in legends though you can't adjust your army and this means like trying to trick the current meta strategies is one of the best things you can do this base overall has some interesting setups i would say because if you take a look at the sweepers they look kind of strange in placement maybe you want to rearrange them but for me it defended pretty good with this setup um just one into the tunnel direction one into the motor inverter direction even though it's really far on the outside but let's talk about air because well one thing is the the, the ground expo so how do you defend air and the key thing is the trap placement this is so important right now and you want to place your black mines first obviously that you're defending like smashes and other things but the other thing is that you want to take a look at the loon pathing of the air spam strategies, which like, what does this mean? Well, first off, you have to throw a couple of like in front challenges, for example, throw a couple of air spam strategies at your base and then take a look at the loon pathing and make sure that those loons are not triggering any black mines. If you can make that work, it is going to be incredibly powerful because all of those black mines are going to hit those dragons, dragon riders, inferno dragons, electric dragons, whatever they're going to use. And that's exactly what I try to do over here because if we take a look at the pathing, those loons are going to follow the bottom path and then we have this Tesla luring all of those loons towards the outside and what this does is they should skip the majority of the black mines. Obviously you cannot place every single black mine anti-loon pathing uh, because you want to defend some other strategies as well. But if you have a couple of anti-loon pathing black mats inside your base, it's a huge, huge benefit and it's uh, pretty strong overall. The next thing which I still like to do is running a lot of air skeletons. Make sure that you're not placing them too close to your um, defending clan castle because if someone's dropping like a poison for the super minions in there, you won't have a great day to be honest. So. The next thing is we have those tests on the right side because a lot of people are starting with your with their heroes on the right side and those tests are making things kind of annoying because first off it deals a lot of damage to your heroes and then it's messing up the pathing and makes it really unpredictable. So those tests are kind of nice as well. The other two tests are meant to defend the, the pathing of the loons and I think we should take a look at the couple of surges which were thrown at this base and how it defended against those. Let's take a look at that. Let's jump into a couple of replays but wait a second, hold up, because, well, we still have a ton of offers in the game. And what does this mean? Well, for you guys, it's only a couple of seconds, as I'm always saying. And for us as Connor Christ, it's a huge support when putting in the creator code. There are so many offers in the game, obviously, like the, uh, the new scenery, the new king skin, and a couple of those offers, which are actually pretty good. For me, sadly, I'm already running over with, like, um, Dark Elixir. But at the same time, if you're thinking about buying those, make sure to use the creator codes. It's supporting the creators a ton. And if you would like to support me, it's code ITSU. Thank you so much for that. I really, truly appreciate that. And I think now we should get into the attacks. And we're starting off with a blizzard. 
yeah, Blizzard Dragon Inferno Dragon Attack strategy, which is typically not run with a Blizzard, but it's still pretty strong. So let's take a look at how this base does against air because it has so many ground expos. The first thing is we saw already he really nicely tried to funnel his king into the right compartment. The problem though is that there is a lot of damage. Now we have the blimp flying into the town direction, and this blimp, this is pretty common nowadays, that you have the blizzard during the dragon part. But this NATO is rotating most of the super wizards away from the town hall, which means this town hall is staying up for way longer than he thought. A couple of wizards actually are going to snipe it, which is quite luck lucky, but either way, this is a low percentage, which I really obviously take any day. Those Infernal Dragons take some of percentages, but this was already the first defense. Now next attack, and this one's going to be a Queen Charge Dragon Riders. And with having so many single Inferno Towers surrounding the Town Hall, you have to choose a different angle. And what this guy does is he's coming in from the different side of the base, which is always risky because, well, the Town Hall's on the other side of the base, right? Like this is always a risky approach. And what he does is he's charging in there, which looks like a really good queen charge. Just take a look at that. There is no second layer threat on this queen, which means like the elixir storage won't shoot back. The other elixir storage won't shoot back. The dark elixir drill won't shoot back. So a lot of things on the second row, which are not having any threat on that queen. So this means, yes, she's taking quite some damage just because of the defending king, the expos whatsoever but she can reach ma mainly everything. So that's kind of the key thing. Now she's just keep charging. There's the blimp. And the first I thought it would be kind of like a random blimp to be honest, but just think about that. Dragon Riders versus a defending super minion clan castle. Who do you think is going to win? You're right, not the Dragon Riders. This is why he had to lure out the clan castle. And with this charge, he never got into the range of the clan castle, which is obviously a huge deal. Now at this point, the Elixir Storage is perfectly placed just to lure the Queen inside the Inferno Tower range. And now he has to like dive into the double single Inferno Tower setup with his Dragon Rider. So this is not going to be any fun at all. And this town was already activated by now because the 50% mark is crossed. But there are no Dragon Riders left to actually make it towards the town. This is the first defense uh, with a one star, which is pretty nice to always take those right so uh, pretty nice overall but i think one question is still open and that's how is this base defending against bats because well this base is running a double single fern tower setup so bats are a pretty obvious choice right let's take a look at that this guy is actually bringing the bats actually quite a few people already take this base with bats and those were typically the best defenses which to be honest was kind of a surprise to me because i thought I mean, quite obvious, the base is crap versus Blizzard because, uh, versus uh, Bats because there is not too many, like, there's at least one multi Inferno Tower missing. Let's see how he does this. First off, just sending everything in, but now at this point it's coming in handy that we have those black ones in the core. First off, he delayed the Warden ability, he tries to protect the Warden, uh, like, he delays the Warden ability to protect the Blimp to make sure that it's actually reaching his target, but with delaying it so much, your, his Dragon Riders already took so much damage, and the Dragons as, as well, that it's really hard to come back from. The Blimp actually taking down the tunnel, yes, but consider this base has four ground expos, and still those Dragons and Dragon Riders just got melted, they disappeared in their core with all of those stacked Black Mines, and this is crazy. All of those dragons just went away. They, they, they just disappeared. And now he's starting off with those bats. The lucky thing for me, obviously, that he's not bringing any cleanup. He just sent everything in. But that's typically how it is in, in Legends, right? And now at this point, yeah, there's a lot of splash damage to the left. Especially the scatter shot. Nothing is pathing into the scatter. The scatter, like the pathing wise, everything is going to go around the scatter. He delayed or like he missed the freeze anyways. And this means the bats are gone, and this is a great defense. Let me know how this base defends you, uh, defense for you. I hope it's defending great. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys back tomorrow. Until then, see ya, and bye-bye.